Iran's new president asserts right to retaliation in a rare call with the UK. In a rare and tense phone call, newly elected Iranian president Masoud Pazeshkian asserted Iran's right to retaliate against Israel. British Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer urged Pazeshkian to avoid escalating conflict, stating that war is not in anyone's interest. However, Pazeshkian defended Iran's position, arguing that a strong response to any attack is a nation's right and a means to prevent further aggression. This conversation follows heightened tensions after Israel was blamed for the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran. Although Haniyeh's death was due to a localized explosion, Iran and its allies remain on high alert, with fears of retaliation looming. Iranian leaders, including Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, have called for harsh punishment against Israel, while Hamas has declared they will not engage in further ceasefire negotiations unless Israel shows more commitment to peace. Meanwhile, Iranian banks faced a major cyber attack this week, crippling their operations. Though Iran has not yet blamed Israel, the situation adds another layer of tension to an already volatile region. With both sides on edge, the potential for further conflict remains a significant concern for global security. Iraq postpones announcement on U.S.-led coalition's mission end date. Iraq's foreign ministry has delayed announcing the end date for the U.S.-led coalition's mission, citing unspecified latest developments. The U.S.-Iraq Higher Military Commission which includes officials from both nations, has been in discussions about the withdrawal of advisors from military sites. The only remaining issues before finalizing the deal are logistical details and setting an official announcement date. An Iraqi official hinted that the announcement is now expected in early September. Iraq, a rare ally to both the U.S. and Iran, currently hosts 2,500 U.S. troops and has Iran-backed militias within its security forces. Tensions in the region have escalated, especially following the Israel-Hamas conflict in Gaza, leading to several attacks on U.S. military bases in Iraq. Iraq has expressed its desire for the withdrawal of coalition troops to begin in September, aiming to officially end the coalition's mission by September 2025, though some U.S. forces may remain in an advisory role. Turkey and Iraq sign historic agreement on security and counterterrorism. In a significant development, Turkey and Iraq have signed a historic memorandum of understanding focused on military, security, and counterterrorism cooperation. This agreement comes after two days of high-level talks in Ankara, signaling improved relations between the neighboring countries. Turkey and Iraq have had tensions in the past, particularly over Turkey's military operations against the Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK, militants in northern Iraq. While Iraq has condemned these operations as violations of its sovereignty, Turkey insists they are necessary for its own security. The new accord, signed by the defense ministers of both nations, aims to strengthen collaboration through the creation of joint security coordination and training centers in Baghdad and Bashika. Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan described the agreement as carrying historic importance, while his Iraqi counterpart, Fuad Hussein, highlighted that this is the first such agreement between the two countries. The agreement is part of ongoing efforts to deepen ties, following Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan's visit to Baghdad in April, where he announced a new phase in relations. Turkey has also welcomed Iraq's decision in March to label the PKK a banned organization. The PKK, which has been involved in an insurgency against Turkey since 1984, is recognized as a terrorist organization by Turkey, the United States, and the European Union. Pentagon warns of deepening cooperation between Russia and Iran. The Pentagon has raised concerns about the growing partnership between Russia and Iran, particularly as Russia continues its war in Ukraine. In a press conference, Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh highlighted the increasingly close relationship between the two nations noting that Russia has been seeking weapons from Iran. Singh pointed out that this deepening cooperation has been evident over the past two years, with recent visits by Russian and Iranian leaders further solidifying their ties. Russia has even promised missile support to Iran following a high-level visit by a Russian defense minister. Regarding the broader implications, Singh emphasized that the U.S. remains committed to defending Israel and has expanded its presence in the Middle East, 
deploying the USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group to the region. However, the Pentagon has not disclosed the specific locations where these additional defense resources will be stationed. This developing partnership between Russia and Iran is being closely watched by the U.S. and its allies, as it could have significant implications for regional and global security. Zelensky announces Ukrainian forces capture Russian town of Sudza. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has announced a major victory for Ukraine's forces. They've taken full control of the Russian town of Sudza. This marks the largest Russian town to fall into Ukrainian hands since their cross-border incursion began over a week ago. Sudza, though small with a pre-war population of about 5,000, is a significant administrative center in Russia's Kursk region. Ukraine's success in capturing this town has caused chaos in the region, leading to the evacuation of over 120,000 civilians, according to Russian authorities. Additionally, at least 100 Russian troops have been captured by Kyiv's forces. Zelensky stated that Ukraine is setting up a military command office in Sudza, indicating possible long-term plans in the Kursk region. The move serves as a signal to Moscow about Ukraine's intentions and commitment to defending its neighboring regions from further Russian aggression. While Russia's defense ministry has not responded to these developments, the incursion has already reshaped the war forcing Russia to consider reallocating troops from eastern Ukraine to the Kursk region. Despite these gains, Ukrainian forces are still facing challenges on other fronts, particularly in the eastern city of Pokrovsk, where Russian troops are advancing. In response to these developments, the White House has observed that while Russia has shifted some troops to Kursk, it may not be enough to repel Ukraine's advances. The U.S. continues to support Ukraine, with no changes to the assistance being provided. Amid this, Ukrainian forces have also targeted Russian airbases with drone attacks, causing significant damage to hangars and potentially aircraft, as shown in satellite images. Ukraine now claims to control more than 80 towns and settlements in the Kursk region, while Russian officials have declared a federal-level state of emergency in nearby Belgorod, signaling a worsening situation. As the conflict intensifies, both sides remain locked in a fierce battle with the Kursk region becoming the latest flashpoint in this ongoing war. U.S. approves $5 billion sale of Patriot missiles to Germany. The U.S. State Department has given the green light for the potential sale of up to 600 Patriot air defense missiles to Germany. This deal, estimated at $5 billion, is aimed at boosting Germany's military capabilities, particularly in response to current and future threats. According to the Pentagon's Defense Security Cooperation Agency, this sale is crucial for strengthening Germany's defenses, especially under the new NATO defense plans. These plans require Germany to significantly enhance its air defenses to protect vital infrastructure and military forces in case of heightened tensions or war. During the Cold War, Germany had 36 Patriot air defense units, but today, that number has dwindled to just nine. This reduction follows Germany's donation of three Patriot units to Ukraine in response to the Russian invasion in 2022. Lockheed Martin, a leading American defense contractor, will be the prime supplier for this sale, which also includes related equipment and technical support. The Pentagon Agency has officially notified Congress about this potential sale, marking a significant step in bolstering Germany's defensive capabilities and reinforcing NATO's collective security efforts. Venezuela's opposition faces setback as allies suggest repeating presidential election. Venezuela's opposition encountered a major challenge on Thursday when key international players began pushing for a repeat of last month's controversial presidential election. The governments of Brazil and Colombia, both allies of President Nicolas Maduro, proposed holding another vote after claims surfaced that the opposition's candidate, Edmundo Gonzalez, had actually won by a significant margin. The opposition, however, is firmly against this idea. Maria Karina Machado, a prominent opposition leader, called the suggestion of a new election an insult to the Venezuelan people. She questioned the logic of holding another election, asking, if a second election were held and Maduro still didn't accept the results, do we go for a third one? The controversy began when Venezuela's National Electoral Council declared Maduro the winner without providing detailed voting data. This lack of transparency led to widespread skepticism, 
especially after Gonzalez's team revealed evidence showing he had won over 80% of the vote. International pressure mounted, with countries like the US, Brazil, and Colombia demanding the release of the full vote tally. Despite this, the call for a new election has gained traction, particularly from Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva and Colombian President Gustavo Petro, who argue that a fresh vote could resolve the dispute. The U.S. remains firm in its stance, with President Joe Biden expressing support for new elections, though his administration later clarified that the focus should be on Maduro's refusal to acknowledge the original results. As Venezuela navigates this political turmoil, the question remains whether a new election will be held and what impact it might have on the nation's future. The opposition continues to call for international support to ensure that the true will of the Venezuelan people is respected. UN to investigate atrocities during Bangladesh's violent protests. The United Nations is stepping in to investigate alleged atrocities committed during the violent protests that led to the ousting of Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina earlier this month. A UN fact-finding mission is expected to arrive in Dhaka next week, aiming to uncover the truth behind the reported violence. The protests, which initially began as student demonstrations against a controversial job quota system, escalated into a mass uprising that left more than 500 people dead. The unrest ultimately forced Prime Minister Hasina to resign on August 5 and flee to India. Gwyn Lewis, the UN resident coordinator in Bangladesh, confirmed that the mission would operate independently, with full cooperation from the interim government led by Nobel Peace Prize laureate Muhammad Yunus. The government has pledged to support the investigation, ensuring it is both credible and impartial. The protests not only resulted in significant loss of life but also saw widespread attacks on public buildings, as well as homes and businesses owned by Hasina's supporters and minority Hindus. In the aftermath, Local authorities have launched their own investigations into allegations of murders, genocide, and crimes against humanity linked to the former government's handling of the situation. This UN mission marks a critical step in addressing the violence that shook Bangladesh and holds significant implications for the country's future as it navigates this period of political transition. North Korea warns South Korea and Japan could become nuclear cannon fodder. In a stark warning, North Korea's state media has declared that closer ties between South Korea, Japan, and the United States could turn the people of South Korea and Japan into cannon fodder in a nuclear conflict. The commentary, published by the Korean Central News Agency, claims that U.S. military threats have driven North Korea to strengthen its nuclear deterrence, leading to heightened tensions in the region. North Korea criticizes the growing security partnership between the U.S., Japan, and South Korea stating that it has created a severe, tripartite security crisis. The article specifically targets the recent military exercises and agreements among these three nations, including a major trilateral exercise and a new security cooperation framework. The North Korean government also took aim at a recent op-ed by top U.S. officials, which labeled North Korea's nuclear program as a primary security threat in the Indo-Pacific. Pyongyang warned that the expansion of military alliances by the U.S. could provoke a strong response from nuclear-armed states like North Korea. This warning comes just before the annual Ulchi Freedom Shield military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea, which are set to take place later this month. North Korea has consistently condemned these drills as rehearsals for an invasion and has used them as justification for its own military provocations including the deployment of new nuclear-capable missile launchers near the border with South Korea. In a move reminiscent of Cold War tactics, North Korea has also recently sent thousands of balloons carrying scrap paper and other materials into South Korea as part of its psychological warfare campaign. U.S. lawmakers call for investigation into Chinese Wi-Fi router maker TP-Link over cybersecurity fears. Two U.S. lawmakers are urging the Biden administration to investigate the Chinese company TP-Link Technology Company over concerns that its Wi-Fi routers could pose a national security risk to the United States. The request comes from both sides of the aisle, with Republican Representative John Molinar and Democratic Representative Raja Krishnamoorthy, who co-lead the House Select Committee on China, calling for a probe by the Commerce Department. TP-Link, which is the world's leading seller of Wi-Fi routers by volume, has faced scrutiny due to vulnerabilities in its firmware. 
These vulnerabilities have reportedly been exploited in cyber attacks targeting government officials in Europe, raising fears that similar tactics could be used against the U.S. In their letter to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, the lawmakers described TP-Link's routers as a glaring national security issue and emphasized the need to assess the potential threat posed by Chinese-affiliated devices. The Commerce Department has indicated that it will respond through appropriate channels, while the Chinese embassy has dismissed the concerns as baseless. The letter is part of growing unease over the possibility that Beijing could leverage Chinese-made routers and other technology for cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure. This follows revelations of a Chinese government-linked hacking campaign last year, known as Volt Typhoon, where hackers took control of privately owned routers to conceal further attacks on American critical infrastructure. Despite TP-Link's claim that it doesn't sell router products in the U.S. and that its devices are secure, the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency and private security firms have identified vulnerabilities in TP-Link routers that could be exploited by hackers. As the U.S. continues to monitor potential cybersecurity threats, this call for an investigation highlights the ongoing concerns about the security of foreign-made technology and its implications for national security. Taiwan rocked by 6.3 magnitude earthquake, no immediate damage reports. Taiwan experienced another significant earthquake on Friday, registering 6.3 on the Richter scale. The quake struck off the eastern city of Hualien, about 21 miles from the coast. This follows a 5.7 magnitude tremor that hit off Taiwan's northeastern shore late Thursday. The earthquake shook buildings in the capital, Taipei causing subway services to slow down, though there are no immediate reports of major damage. The quake had a depth of nearly 10 kilometers, and authorities have warned of possible aftershocks up to 5.5 in magnitude over the coming days. Around a dozen minor quakes have been recorded near Hualien since the main tremor. In addition to the quake, weather officials have raised concerns about landslides in mountainous areas, especially after recent heavy rainfall. Taiwan is situated on the boundary of two tectonic plates, making it highly susceptible to earthquakes. In April, Hualien was struck by the largest earthquake to hit Taiwan in over 25 years, resulting in nine fatalities and over 900 injuries. Powerful typhoon hits Japan's Pacific coast. Typhoon Ample is making its presence felt on Japan's Pacific coast with powerful winds and heavy rain. The storm, located about 190 miles south of Tokyo, has been packing gusts up to 216 kilometers per hour, 134 miles per hour, according to the Japan Meteorological Agency. Although the typhoon is not expected to make direct landfall, it's moving northeast along the Honshu coast, skirting the Tokyo region and impacting areas home to around 40 million people. The Japan Meteorological Agency has rated it as very strong, just below the violent typhoon category. Residents are being advised to stay alert for severe weather conditions, including storms, high waves, landslides, and flooding. The U.S. military's Joint Typhoon Warning Center predicts maximum sustained wind speeds of 110 knots, with gusts reaching 135 knots by later today. The typhoon has already caused significant disruptions. Over 4,000 homes are without power, and hundreds of flights and train services have been canceled. All Nippon Airways has grounded 335 flights affecting around 72,000 passengers, while Japan Airlines has cancelled 361 flights impacting 57,000 customers. Major bullet train routes, including Tokyo to Nagoya, are also closed, and Tokyo Disneyland will shut down early today. The storm arrives during Japan's Oban holiday week, a peak travel period. This follows record rainfall from Tropical Storm Maria just days earlier. Experts note that typhoons are becoming more intense and longer-lasting due to climate change. Recent research highlights a trend of storms forming closer to coastlines and rapidly intensifying. Fiu Thai Party picks Peitung Turn Shinawat as Prime Minister candidate. Thailand's Fiu Thai Party has nominated Peitung Turn Shinawat the 37-year-old daughter of former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat, as its candidate for the next Prime Minister. This decision follows the Constitutional Court's recent dismissal of the incumbent Premier, Sretha Thavison, due to a breach of regulations involving a cabinet appointment. 
lawmakers are set to vote on Pei Tungturn's candidacy in Parliament on Friday. She expressed confidence that her party and coalition could address Thailand's ongoing economic challenges. The Fiu Thai Party, a major force in Thai politics, is leading a coalition of 11 parties, including former rivals who once opposed Thaksin. Sretha, who has been in office for less than a year, is the third prime minister from Fiu Thai to be removed by the court. This adds to the long-standing political instability in Thailand, characterized by coups, protests, and court rulings, largely driven by the conflict between the military-backed establishment and parties linked to Thaksin. Thaksin's return to Thailand last August coincided with Sretha's rise to power, signaling a possible truce in the political turmoil, despite ongoing conflicts with newer parties like Move Forward Party, which was blocked from forming a government despite winning the popular vote last year. Pei Tungturn, who was preferred over senior party figure Chekesam Naitisiri, needs to secure 247 votes out of 493 in parliament to become prime minister. Her selection reflects Fiu Thai's strategy to align with younger voters, though overcoming conservative and military influences in Thai politics remains challenging. The case against Sretha was brought by former senators appointed by the 2014 military junta, who also played a role in blocking the Move Forward Party's leader. The Constitutional Court recently dissolved the Move Forward Party and banned its leaders from politics for a decade. The Fiu Thai Party's new candidate, Pei Tungturn, represents a significant shift as Thailand navigates its complex and turbulent political landscape.